you need me to say something. <laughs> gotcha. So, I explained earlier how our party ended up in, in inheriting this quest from these uh, deceased monks that had been sent from the Tower of the Heavens to uh, parlay information from this druid named Darewith, and in exchange they would give him this bestiary that the dead monks had been carrying on them. Their only piece of value, by the way. So overwhelmed by these emotions for a bit and sort of nostalgic about this quest, perhaps, they decided, yeah, we'll go through this unknown valley. We'll, we'll cut off some time. We were originally, you know, might save a day even and go see this Darewith guy. And you estimated from your memory thoughts, it would be about a three day journey and through the wilderness, you guys could trek. You've kind of followed the river because it has most of the trails and game trails and whatnot. And Briffin uh, proves to be quite adept at this. He leads you faultlessly. He's a druid, fourth level druid. Um, he's casting spells that kind of part the foliage and whatnot and, and at the extreme parts and once in a while he talks to trees and and animals and whatnot to get advice and everything goes really well for the first two days nothing happens um and you guys have camped and kept watch and everything went well uh if you guys want to change your spells at any point if you guys want to do anything different equip yourselves differently at any point you can do this you're fully rested um there's been a couple incidents where somebody fell in a creek or something and it's kind of more humorous and lighthearted. and you guys have got found yourself to be enjoying the trek uh and getting to know each other a little better uh you can't help but talk once once a while the twins turn out to be these quite quir quirky little well not so little or they're, they're starting to grow they're getting tall at the point at this point i'm not sure how the tall they are they're still kids in a way and but they proved to have some interesting insights and really those really weird accents and and somos is a rock and tyrath the half orc mrs valma um who's been I'm gone never. now for a while but Somos still oh he's away from the water yeah he's 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 miserable well, there's a the river there. It's not the same, but it's flowing water. Um, <laughs> Ocean God. Oh, no. Yeah. If he, starts, if he starts getting too melancholy about it, Tyrath is not above shoving him in. <laughs> oh, you know what you should do next time you're at the ocean is get a conch so that you can hold it up and then you'll get like a, you know, like a, a soothing <laughs> reset. If you hold it to your ear or something, you hear the ocean. It'd be a, but the water does help. It does. It, it's not the same. Not the same. <laughs> I mean, I'm not dragging anybody down. I'm just, you look at me and I'm obviously looking a little bit depressed by now. Um, it's not slowing me down. It's not doing anything like that. But okay. Stomos is just so far away from his element. Yeah. You know, he's just. But, well, that's, yeah. He, and you guys keep traveling. And. You estimate you've gone like three days and you're getting now, you followed the river somewhat. And if you're looking at this map, you don't have to, but the river traveled west for about 15 miles. And you rested the first night before you turned north. And then the second night you traveled around the bend and rested again. And then you got close. All of a sudden it looked like the mountains were there, but it's just a trick of the eye. Uh, the start of the valley starts at, an, at a kink so that if you look straight on, it looks like it's just a flat, cement or cliff wall but you realize now as you get closer that oh it's just a bit of an illusion as soon as you're within about 10 12 miles you, you realize wow there's a huge valley in there significant like probably big like mile across or two miles across and able to and the river does flow through it so you guys turn north and keep going three days pass and you the valley's picks up on either side and closes you guys and you go deep into this valley and uh, you get a good feeling. All goes well. I feel uh, on. Anybody, yeah, anybody want to do anything or discuss anything or ask any questions, any personal questions about party members? Um, anyone need an introduction? I think we all know each other here, right? Yes, price an open book unless anyone wants to pry information out of him. Yeah. 
and Somos, you know Sprite. Yeah. And Sprite, you also met the twins years ago. Uh, these high elves that are quirky duo. Uh, Jeff's playing one of them, so I'm kind of running him at, at the moment. And they also have a pet pseudo dragon, which is about the size of a cat or a small cat. And it's got like kind of butterfly wings and stuff and it's iridescent and quite a beautiful little creature in some ways. But you look, keep looking at its scorpion tail and kind of, hmm. And its tongue once in a while, but it, it disappears often. It's not around. You're following a, a trail, and it's heading north. And you can see up ahead there are some large trees and large huge tall uh cedars and some uh douglas fir which are big honking trees they can reach 200 feet and and so on and a huge canopy and it's going to get dark up ahead if you enter but it's still daylight and you can move for quite a ways yet however be before moving on um who would uh be briffin probably or who would have the best keenest sight, actually? Um, Pseudo Dragon, because he's a great scout. He flies ahead and. Well, also, I've lived most of my life on on you know a boat, scanning the horizons and things like that. So, for whatever. Okay, that's so uh, Somos, and I'll roll for the uh, for for QP. What am I rolling? Uh, twenty sided. For again, just uh, a wisdom check. Oh, okay. Well, the, I rolled a ten. I made it. Yeah, and uh, you did. You do notice two forms up on the right side on the mountain, and they they're curving and they're they're doing a big circle. And you point it out to the other party members, and. You can see, and I don't know if any of the original characters are here from the Eye of the Serpent. Brian, you were... Bit... So yeah, but you were brought there by the... Oh, okay. Well, so anyway, good. Ian would be cringing a bit because it's reminiscent of these large birds that originally swooped this party up and brought them to their nest. But these ones are some sort of large bird of prey, and they're circling and coming down toward you guys they've clearly seen you um even though you guys are taking some precautions you're being a bit cautious it's not like you're in a war zone you guys were you know hiking along pretty good but they clearly saw you and they're coming down you can see they're pretty large and not yeah you can hear i don't know if you heard that screech go or whatever in the sound yeah. <laughs> Accurately um, yeah, they're not coming at you aggressively, as far as you know, but they, they're, they're angling in, and they're beautiful. These big, beautiful golden eagles. Oh, well, if they end up coming too close, they're going to be beautiful blood smears on my, on my mall. So hopefully they'll keep the distance a little bit. Yeah, so almost so... Okay, everyone can say what they want to do now. Let's start from left to right. I'm looking at the uh, hangouts here. So, Brian, uh, the twins, and they're both looking up. And with your keen vision, right away, you can see. Psh, and your, your sight is better than Somos's. You're, the twins oh, yeah. have incredible vision. Oh, but it's daylight. Ouch. Okay, forget it. So the twins look <laughs> up and go, ah, ah, and, and uh cover their eyes yeah uh, <laughs> and so almost pointing and the rest of the party does it's look right up there. it's right there yeah okay so what do you want to do though the twins though because you can't look up you can do something still and we'll, we'll move along to so almost you're just ready in your weapon and getting and, and just Hi. and say okay uh tyrath if we see something on the horizon tyrath is going to grab his sword ready a shield and he's going to get very half orky. <clears throat> he's going to start grunting and kind of shoving anyone that's smaller than him out of the way to get to the front of the party. <laughs> You're shoving so much. <laughs> that, that's actually quite funny. No, he, he noticed said anyone so smaller kinda, than him. <laughs> wait, wait a sec. Move over here. 
All right, wait, wait a sec. Move over here. They're moving around. Uh, Nestor. I think right. Sprite's actively nervous given his size. His name to them is like a chicken. Yep. So he's got a hey, sword Darren. and a dagger out. Just hey, Darren, heads up. I have nothing ready. but a black screen. I don't even see where we're at on the map. I can see where you're pinging, but I don't see myself. That's why I have to F5. Like, roll 20. I had it earlier. I had a black screen. I had F5 at the roll 20. I'm try really that first just, and then yeah, let me know. Yeah, yeah, let me try it real quick. It's weird. Yeah. Um. So okay, they circle and they're they're staying pretty high, but coming down, they're now within. They're still out of bow range. Clearly, they're probably five hundred feet. You can see them now. They're big. They're giant eagles. Uh, they're not rocks though. Like, and Griffin, Griffin says, "Hold, please, one moment. These are not the same creatures that got us before. Hold it." I thought Griffin was careful. dead. Oh wait, no, Griffin's not dead. Somebody else is dead. Um, yeah, I still have nothing but black. By the way. Yeah. Here. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I've got the whole screen visible, and it's nothing but black. Okay, let me try that again. I had to switch maps. I had to actually go from uh, the have... main image. I had to actually switch over to the awesome. map. Jeff, welcome. Yes, We're just starting. You guys have traveled 40 miles through the wilderness after the encounter with the memory web. And you're just about to enter this valley that goes through this little mountain range where you're supposed to meet that druid, Darewith. And uh, as you were just about to enter this huge uh, forested area with these massive trees, he saw these two large birds of prey coming down and they got bigger and bigger as they came closer. And you notice that they're giant eagles griffin says they're mighty giant eagles look and they're huge golden giant eagles but they're they're not going in he says they're not going into an attack stance no, like normally they would they attack aggressively and dive and now they're just holding at about 300 feet above you guys circling uh now i need the twins now that he's here i need you guys to make a uh Intelligence check. Now it's minus five, so your intelligence minus five, and then you have to get under that. Okay. I made mine with a seven. All right. All right. Let's see. And uh, I'm sorry, Jeff, are you ready to go? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm still getting in here, but no, I, I failed miserably with a natural 20, so I know nothing. Yeah, you, you, but you see that your brother is suddenly alert, and in your thoughts, Tyron, you can hear this thought that, please do not go further until we discuss things in these you can hear this sensing quest go out. And these eagles are actually communicating telepathically. Oh, are they? Yeah. And everybody else can actually make a minus eight uh, wisdom check. Or intelligence, excuse me. Uh, how far away are the birds? 300 feet, would you say? Yeah, just kind of out of bow range, just hovering and circling. And... Tyrath is going to try this, but I want to because I want to see if I can actually roll under a three tonight. <clears throat> Let's see. Um, what are we rolling for? Oh, good God! I rolled a sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> Tyrath's just kind of drooling while looking and thinking about killing these things. That's all there is. Got a five. It. That's a pass, probably. Maybe. I have an intelligence of sixteen, I think. Yep. So you sense it. There's a strong, also an impul uh, telepathic message, yeah. and it's in this Ikea kind of accent. It's, welcome, ground walkers. This is the home of Derwith. If you come in peace, follow us. If not, leave now. I keep, I keep walking and following them. Same here. Put your weapons away. Okay, they're not going <laughs> to eat me like a chicken. There's no way I'm putting my weapons away. I mean... I'll use it like a walking staff if I have to, but 
I mean, these giant birds are, are, are talking to me, and I can actually understand them. Um, this druid is not seriously trying to convince a half-orc that's afraid he's going to be picked up and carried away by birds again to put his swords away, right? And, and Griffin's holding up his hands, and Griffin's casting a spell to speak with animals. And he, he says, we are a peaceful troop. We mean you no harm. And he points at Somos. Anyone else still have their weapons out? Never had one out to begin with. I'm just using it like a walking staff right now. At this, is, at this point, it's just like, nope, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. He is you know, peaceful with his weapon. He means no harm. I vouch for him. I'm Griffin of the Green Somos, Willow. Somos vouches for himself. As I and said, they can, they can, I mean, like I said, I can understand them. They can understand me. I don't need anybody to vouch for me. Yeah, he's speaking as a follower of the Willow branch. Oh, uh, I'm speaking as a very pissed off uh, ocean. Um, um, I forget the word. Um, Priest? <laughs> yeah, we can use that. <laughs> Not the word that I meant, but yeah. Well, um, the Griffin gives you a wry look, but uh, the eagles seem to accept this. And uh, they slowly start flying to the north. And there is there is a kind of a game trail that cuts into the forest and it seems to be meant to use. And you guys move on ahead. Yeah, I'm using the, the business end of the mall. Um, is actually I'm I'm holding by the I'm holding it by the handle, but the business end of the mall is what's actually digging into the ground. Yeah, your walking <laughs> stick, sort of. Anyone yeah. else want to do anything at this point? It seems to be quite a journey. It's gonna be. Uh, it's actually gonna take you the whole day. It's like a 15, 14, 15 mile trek through this forest. And again, Briffin proves incredibly useful. He seems to have a knack for staying in the trail, being a druid, and yeah. yeah. And you guys seem to follow this river until it, night starts to fall. It's getting dark. And the eagles have been once in a while through the foliage. You could see them up there circling, keeping an eye on you guys, apparently. And you've heard, heard other creatures in the, in the woods. It's very large, deep dark forest you've entered and you feel yourself quite oppressed and but yet uh, the elves actually would feel quite happy i suppose sprite would have no reason not to particularly <laughs> somos is pretty grumpy this Tyrath, <laughs> he, i'm not sure well he could I'm not, all it out out I'm not taking it out on anybody i just i no, i'm not comfortable with my surroundings no don't feel bad. If you're talking giant eagles being anywhere near us, I don't care what people say. The last time a giant bird was around me, I wound up in his claws in its nest in the middle of a freaking mountain range. And I had to fight my way out of it. No. no. Bad he's fine with this. A little uncomfortable by the birds. But other than that, he's fine with it as long as nothing hits him in the face. Now, the forest opens up a little bit and the trees get a little smaller and you find yourself in quite a a beautiful area, like uh, where it's some of it's open yet to the last of the sun as it comes in, and it's changed a little bit. And the rivers become this beautiful bubbling brook that uh, cascades and sub points. And you guys are feel very nice. It's a nice place. Um, still on your guard, of course. And the eagles are keeping their distance, but they're leading you toward. And the river branches up ahead, and you guys cross the branch, and now it's getting dark. Yet up ahead you see down a little bit below in this beautiful, be quaint little uh, grotto and uh, rustic, beautiful area, there is a building, a compounded building. And it seems to be made out of some natural trees that uh, have been woven together with vi growing vines and whatnot. And yet there is some structure. There are some timber framing and whatnot. And there's some fencing. And you can see light spilling out from windows. Uh, real nice, soft, subtle yellow light. Um, and it's not actually that dark yet, actually. It's still light enough out that you can just see the structure. I didn't mean to rush that. Is this like an elven tree home? Uh, this must 
Griffin like mentions this must be the domain of Derwith. Now remember your memories. Harm no living thing. I implore you. Even if we are provoked. And do you guys now see what I'm seeing? Indeed. Um, now, I just to zoom in now, uh, in I this map, we're that. still theater mind. You don't have to see this even, actually. But what, uh, what you do see is a... Uh, yeah, and some of the walls of these buildings are like mud, it almost seems, and, and very natural, like earth homey and almost like something out of a... yeah fantasy you hear the sound of a uh large goat kind of baying not in fright or alarm particularly but and a couple other chiming in and they're they're large i don't know if you can see them over there but uh, if you guys job. want yeah the eagles still they circle off and they kind of gain altitude and like just skull and, island the size of these things yeah, you see some beautiful, huge flowers, like right away. Beautiful, gorgeous blooms and blossoms. And this doesn't pay it justice, right? I just kind of threw these in. And then all of a sudden you hear this huge hum of like, uh, and some like bumblebees the size of freaking uh, Rottweilers go by humming away. And yeah, that's terrifying. <laughs> I'm glad and I'm not allergic to bees. One kind of skims by you, and they're they're pollinating the flowers, and they're going off, and and there's a few of them around, but you know they what scatter. What seven seas is that? That would yeah. be a very big bee. A very large bee. A bee. A bee, the si a bee apparently the size of a large dog. What is a bee? It's a bus. It's a bee of unusual size. <laughs> And you guys are literally there's a there's a fence there, but it's not a, a defensive fence or anything. It's sort of a, like a almost a token here guide to the animals. And you notice that uh, you guys, could, well, I'll let you guys decide what you want to do. You're, well, first I have to know: are we going to get one session in this game in this module where we don't get a Princess Bride reference? <laughs> oh, no guarantees. No, no, no guarantees. No, no guarantees. <laughs> Anyways, so Tyrath is as actually you wish, kind of, Kyle. As you're getting you no bad feelings. Everything <laughs> seems really nice. Like you can smell the flowers, and and it's you guys are you, you guys are actually care. feeling quite happy and elated. Have uh, fun storming yeah. the castle. I've never um, seen a bee before. Okay, yeah, you've never Tyrath, seen an Tyrath insect Tyrath before. The, well, Tyrath is from the city, so this is probably no pun intended bugging the shit out of him. He's yeah, got to be hating this. I think, think Sprite is going to take the time to actually just introduce some of the concept of what a bee is. Okay, so a couple rounds go by while well, you guys are just like what standing there, like looking and wow. And uh, so far, you've just seen some goats and about I don't know how many bees, but they're they're from some they're coming and going. Um, oh, one of the the goats, one of them jumps up onto the roof. Actually, you don't see the goats yet, do you? Um, not quite. Right well, now, not really anything. <laughs> Dear God! Perception. Let me. Let me. Um, I can only imagine the size of the goats. <sighs> you don't see our little miniatures versus the size of the goats? Yeah. I oh, they're, see they're a little at the big. Moment. Hold on. Uh, they're not. One second. And you guys are a little bigger. No. Pardon me. Uh, well, that that goat's definitely big oh, enough okay. to make a Scotsman happy. <laughs> They're big, though. Oh, oh yeah, this, God, this goat no, comes no, meandering. No, no. Yeah, suddenly you see this goat come meandering down the trail, and it's probably weighs two thousand pounds at least. It's like the size of a huge warhorse. It's I think at some point you see Sprite back up in horror at the size. Yeah. Oh my that's God, a, that's and a goat the size of a freaking ox. Um. You guys see a glaze kind of come over Tyrath's eyes, and it's very clear that he's already thinking mm. about all the different ways he could take <laughs> uh -oh. make it into food. He's slivating. <laughs> hey, well, I don't want to deal with a giant goat 
thing it, that it, could it's get to not, not. Okay, a round goes by. So a few, three, four rounds have gone by, and this goat just meandered over, kind of just nonchalant, and it's nibbling at the the verge and the grass. You can see the place is really wet, beautiful, beautiful, upkept, um, in in a way, very rustic, very rustic. It's not, um, but anyway, this creature comes toward, and it stops right at the the gateway, and gives you kind of a a curious look, and then wanders off and starts to munch on some more grass. It, Seems to be still hungry. Hmm. It's a goat. They do that. But he didn't seem alarmed at you guys. He seemed to check you out, or, or I don't know. Well, it's a goat, whatever. One of the guys I know, his dad raises goats, and one of the goats got to be a butthead one day, so he grabbed the damn thing by the horn and started headbutting it, screaming, Who's the lead goat? Nice. Okay, hey, there's a large cow. <laughs> That's meandering around too, and this one's actually really dumb. He's just kind of munching on the verge over here. Okay, so that's a cow of normal size, so not. No, terrifying. that's a pretty big cow. It is. Well, yeah, it is kind of normal, but it's big. It, it's it not. Can't be both, dude. <laughs> it's either normal or it's big. No, it's the biggest it's, cow you've ever seen. Yeah, but it's not larger than a normal cow than the goat is to a normal goat. That goat might be part, part mountain goat. They're big. That goat's friggin' huge. That thing is like 12 feet long. I demand big Four, horn 14 feet. feet long, right? That thing's probably about 7 feet at the shoulder. That goat. So, it's, so a, what, it's a dire goat. So, so that's <laughs> about the size of a freaking like a couple big horn sheep. A couple bees cruise by, you guys. About 20 feet. <laughs> Bang I'm off and... the wall at one. I'm just like, get away from me. Literally. I mean, these things are frightening. They will not attack you unless you attack it. You must not. Griffin's coming towards you urgently, and there's like a frantic look in his eye. You must not. You must control yourself. Don't believe Don't me. provoke them. Well, they're provoking me. Please. They're going about their business. We're in their home. And he says, so, what shall we do? Hmm. Another round goes by. I guess we should start looking for this druid that we seek. Yes, I guess so. So you guys can enter the compound then and, and uh, or wait some longer, but it's nobody's attacked you yet. Uh Going to yeah. enter the compound calmly. Yeah, I'll start walking forward slowly. Um, the business end of my mall is back on the ground, but these bees are just scaring the crap out of me. I've never seen something like that before. Yeah, I think as we, I think as we're progressing further towards this complex, Sprite has continued to try and no, explain what a bee is. is. To some okay. of us, uh, we'll make a persuasion check then. Uh, roll an intelligence check and see if you can get Somos a bit. You know, okay, I, I'm pretty uh, sure they're they're not going to attack us. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> he can't. He can't. I've never seen anything like this in my life before. Right. Got a three. It's a large pollinating insect. He says they're like a they're like a fish. They won't attack us. Uh, oh, well, you yeah, have three with a 16 intelligence. I know, I know some fish would attack, so that doesn't that doesn't steady my nerve any. I mean, okay. <laughs> anyway, we move along. Uh, well, now I know exactly how to mess with Somers. I just need a dead. I I need a dead bee, a giant oh, bee. Go buy these beautiful, uh, nice plants and whatnot. And enter, and it's been about, a, it's been about eight ten minutes, and you realize that you can enter, there's a couple buildings, three buildings, in fact. Um, it seems to be a residence sort of compound. There's these animals that kind of have free reign. You see there, there's another one down here, another huge goat. And this goat just suddenly jumps on the roof of this building and just launches up there and stops. And there's like stuff growing on the roof of the, of the building. He starts munching on the, on the grass on the top. And 
you guys just kind of dream. Yeah, it, it is. It is weird in a way. But to very nice. Who's lived either underground or on a ship. So he's never seen anything like this before. Yep. But it is wonderful me. to you too. It's like you're it's not like a dark slimy cave or something. This is it's still, full it's, of life and, and color. But it's unnerving. I've never seen anything like this before. Yeah. I don't know what to think. Mm. So anyone want to do anything in the next round or two? Um I'm going to look around and try to see if I can find, you know, somebody. I want somebody who's not nature huggy. Does the interior of this, uh, I guess, cavernous, wildernessy area, does it block out the sun enough for us to actually enjoy ourselves? Or Yeah, it's actually nice in here. And then even like that huge cow, you can touch it, reach out and touch the thing. It just so seems, it looks at you kind of with cow eyes and yeah, the cow is the only thing that I've ever seen before. I'm I'm looking at that thing <laughs> like sizing it up for a porterhouse. Um, but everything else is just so alien to me. Hey, Darren, because the dude. sunlight normally hurts us so much. I love that this place is kind of the best of both worlds, the, the indoors and the outdoors sort of a thing. Hey, Darren, mm -hmm. I'm gonna switch computers because. My damn left leg is killing me. Okay. Where I almost broke my ankle the other night. Uh, now, Somos, you're, you're Somos, kind of Somos. yeah. Somos oh, doesn't anyway. like this. He's nervous. He's just I don't I don't know I don't know. Uh, but he's you're not you're not freaking out or anything. You're just you know. Well, no, because I've kind of calmed down because I saw the giant cow. <laughs> yeah, that's something like, normal. Like I said, like I said, Somos is sizing that thing up for a porterhouse right now. Mm hmm. Oh, at least now it's finally working. Yeah, so you're you actually hmm, dwarves like beef could be interesting. Mm -hmm. Uh, now I would need who would roll here? Yeah, I guess Somos and Tyrath. They're in front. You guys <laughs> actually don't need to roll. You guys see a a small tree right about here. Suddenly turns into a human, a human, a half elf. This is my friend. He's crazy. Okay. And he's got this weird set of antlers on his head. Probably not the weirdest he's he's kind of, Yeah, and he's green, kind of smock. And he's got like <laughs> weird jewelry on and whatnot. And he's. There, there was a tree a moment ago, and now there's this character, and it must be him. And, can't be the strangest thing I've seen all. Ah, Griffin is pointing. Ah, I see. And he's holding his hands up, clasped together, and kind of bowing toward this this character. And, and Derwith is probably, he's probably about 60, 70 feet away from you guys. 91, 2, 3, 5. Yeah, about 60, 70 feet away. And he's he holds up his hands and puts them together toward you guys and, and bows a bit. And then to his side. I'm and he looks to his right and his left. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you guys uh, wish to do anything at the moment? Well, this is the guy we were looking for, so I'll kind of walk forward. Yeah. yeah I will walk, walk forward, forward to, to speak because, you know, this is the first human being we've seen, so, or humanoid. Humanoid person. Granted, it was just a tree a second ago. Uh, Sprite, you spin your head around and you see this humongous you have to yeah it's a saber-toothed tiger what 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 it's yep. huge it's like probably weighs a couple thousand pounds like it's a giant saber-toothed tiger and it came stealthily crawling over the roof of the building behind you like to your right but it's it's staying down it's just sitting on the edge of the roof just He's sitting there and it's back it up just like nope no no yeah this thing could swallow you <laughs> And then you guys also see a large, humongous, well, it's a huge silverback gorilla. And large, big friggin' thing, probably 900 pounds, 800 pounds. And it 
bounds across the opening and and climbs up onto the roof of this storage bin and just kind of watches you guys wear leaves kind of hanging off the side with this one huge long muscular ape arm sprite is now uh, visibly uncomfortable at this and it's now it's getting dark and there is light coming out from uh, a couple cracks and in, in windows and slots now everybody there's nobody's has weapons out or really or anybody's uh everybody's yeah. facing him though and he comes calmly walking onto the path I bid you welcome to Coombe Carnant. I am Darewith. And I sense that you come here for a reason. Do you not? Yes, if not being slightly uncomfortable by your uh, rather large menagerie. Yeah. That's he the motions, he kind of motions like waves away to his right. Uh, ooh, that's us! He says something. Taxneth! Taxneth, go! And the cat kind of gives out a little growl, turns and goes back over and, and disappears into the shadows. I'm yes. so, He's very protective. And this silverback just staying its ground. He's hanging back. Please, I... Since no darkness or corruption in you, what brings you to my home? <laughs> and I don't know who wants to be the spokesperson at this point. Anyone in particular? I. We come with this book. Ah, I am the beast He's uh, a book. He immediately, his interest is peaked. You can tell, and you can tell, he even grabs a spectacle that's hanging around his neck, and he's getting ready to put it in one of his eyes. And, and it's, you can see there's like a curve around his eye where he, he, it automatically goes in. He wears it so much. He's a scholarly guy. His fingertips, so actually, surprisingly, are dipped in ink and whatnot. And he's got a book, you say? Ah. Right. Come on, give him the book. And he Who's got the book? Of, comes forward and he seems to please please i am not being a good host come inside before and i i've introduced myself i've yet to know your names Aye. somos please. somos the dwarf okay. i've not seen a dwarf for years i've never seen anything like this before ah that yeah, has taken me a long time, long time, to get this and tame these beans. And some of them I've rescued. That great cat you saw, I rescued that cat, saved its life. It now is my friend. It will allow no harm to come to me. But come inside. And he leads you into this number one part, and then he leads you into this section here. Mm -hmm. And it's very rustic, very, uh, it's almost like that Hobbit movie where uh, uh, Radagast is home. You know, there's tree trunks and kind of mesh into vine walls. And, and there's little animals scurrying about, uh, even mice and whatnot, it's, and critters. Yet he's, he pays them no heed and he gently pushes them aside or whatever. And, and you, you know the kind of uh, what I'm getting at. Yeah. Um, Six wooden supports uh, support the roof of this simple elongated hall. Against the walls are benches of rammed earth, and along the center of the earthen floor is a long hearth. And there is a low, this is where the light was coming from, was this nice glowing hearth. And he, he sits around and he brings you guys, he offers you all these kind of uh, pot, pottery bowls and whatnot. And lo and behold, this huge silverback comes walking in from the door from four, and he's carrying this huge tray and it's uh, got all sorts of uh, odds and ends on it. And it does have fish on it, um, smoked yeah. fish. And there are some sausages and whatnot, surprisingly. Uh, but he's apparently, he understands the concept of the predator-prey relationship and the harvesting of the nature in a natural way. Hmm. And you guys, you guys kind of know what I mean, right? Yeah. So you guys settle in. And even Somos, if you want, you can... 
interject, but he, he's very courteous and he, he's like, so now it's been so long since I've had visitors, please. And you notice he has honey mead that's given to you guys and it's very tasty. Um, and, yeah. Oh, it's real nice honey mead. Like he knows his stuff. And there's also milk, warm milk uh, with spices in it for those who don't want to partake and he has wine and he's well endowed with all sorts of, uh, uh nice Sprite will willingly partake in the meat. Yeah. And there's cheese and, and some really good food. And he, he seems, yeah, like a hermit yet. He seems kind of eager, eager for news, of the outside world. And you guys chat a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you guys want to tell him any of how you got here or whatnot. So yeah, cause he asked you guys now he says, so, Let's talk about business a bit, little A. And you guys had a couple drinks or whatnot, and uh, he strikes up a pipe. I'm eating the hell out of the fish. Oh, it, okay. Yeah, it's salmon out of the river. Oh, that's yeah. fine. And it's from the ocean originally, right? They they my, they came up, and he's it's yeah. really, oh, just so yeah. good. And they bring out fun. more for you. He's just like, oh, so you're hungry. You have traveled fast here. So, again, what I'm, brings you here? I'm... Uh, doing or eating wine with cheese and fruit and you know white snack stuff. I think at this point Sprite has introduced himself to the uh, welcoming druid, shall we okay, say? And introduce your friends and so you guys unless you guys all introduce and he gets your names and he goes, Ah, interesting group and he is eyeballing the twins for a couple for a few seconds, just going, Well, this is a strange group here, indeed. Well, ah, the book you say. May I see it now? And he reaches over and grabs it and holds it reverently. And he says, oh. And you can see now there are bookshelves. Um, he is library workshop. Oh, the door that the uh, gorilla came through, actually, it's left open. And in there, you can see there's like a workshop library. There's like benches and there's a uh, an artist's, uh, what do you call it? Um, a painting easel. 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 Thank you. Yeah, there's easels in there and all sorts of, there's a loom and stuff. And then there's, that's his workshop library. And number three would have been... That's actually his bedroom, but for now, so he feasts you guys. He's, he's, he looks through the books reverently, and he's just like, oh, this is precious indeed. So what do you wish in exchange for such a treasure? And he gingerly gives it to the, the gorilla, and the gorilla is kind of, by the way, this is Rupert. Rupert, this is uh, my hearty band of Somos and, and Tyrath and Sprite and Merrick and Briffin and Tyrin and Tyrath. And uh, this, it seems like this grill has taken on the role of this sort of butler uh, at the time. And he gingerly grabs a book and one huge muscled paw and saunters into the library workshop and puts it gingerly onto his reading stool. So, such a treasure, what can I do for you? Regretfully, we must inform you this book was on its way to you before we received it. Uh, we found it in the uh, aftermath of a battle. Several priests, uh, monks, lost their lives on their way to you to bring it. No. From the Tower of Heavens? Indeed. Ah, see. Mm -hmm. I was told this book would be coming. And I expected it, but not from the likes of you. I apologize, but it was now I see. Ah, and what happened then? Um, we, difficult to explain, but we. Uh, yeah, that was an interesting experience. Of them and their quest to bring you this book. And. Uh, it's very urgent that it be brought to you. Hmm. There was. This is strange. It's such a gift. I sensed it, but I, I strange. I there must be some cost. Hmm. Interesting. Our book to give you. It was a gift from others that we simply make sure that you receive. 
Okay, we tried to see. Yes, Shelfie sent this, did he not? You seem to believe that uh, if this book was not given to you, that uh, they would likely die. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh. Something along the lines. What? Oh my god! <laughs> hey, Nestor. There's somebody behind you making a lot of noise. Okay, so you guys remember some of your memories from that we inherited. And one of them was definitely about um, Darwith was a sage, or not a sage, but he was learned in astrology. Okay. And you remember now, like the, the monks knew that the book was supposed to be exchanged for knowledge about the star. Oh, that's right, where it went. And that's it. You guys now clicks, you guys realize these memories are hitting you again. And you you actually were told a description of it, this dull round thing that Durwith, who's knowledgeable in these matters, would might know. Oh yes, the star that fell from the sky. Bingo. We to exchange the book. For knowledge of, and then I'll relay to him the, yeah. you know, star ah, this guy. Yes. Did any of you see it strike? I, I, we did. Well, I'll tell you something. There is a group of vile creatures at the other end of this valley, or in near the middle, other side. And they've been a nuisance and an evil force. They have raided to the north on the other side. I have kept them bottled up at this side. I have fought them many times. They're kind. They're the Darrow. Do you know these? I, I do. Oh. I grew it up. Yes. <laughs> these creatures, they came from the Underdark somewhere. And they burrowed up. And long ago, it was a while ago now, at least 15, 20 years, it's been a thorn now. They've had a lair there somewhere in the valley. But the star, I saw it the other night from my perch. And I can find its location. And I sense it's close to their lair. But I will need time to find it. And it is getting late. So, you are my guests. You're welcome to stay. No harm will come to you. But please harm no living thing. For I may go to my... If any of you may accompany me as well, but I will be up. I will need most of the night to decipher the stars, to find the exact location of this star. I would like to join him because I am intrigued. I've also got an interest in astronomy, so uh, I would join him as well. Yeah. And... So anyone else want to do anything now? Humans need rest. Elves can go a day or two before needing rest without well, I, I can go a lot longer than that if I, yeah. Yeah, yeah. well, right. And unless you have oh, yeah, and abilities. You want to share that ability, by the way. We shall see what it would cost me to do so, because I don't think we even have that. I think it's like 10 PSPs a day. So the party is at this intersection in the river and it's a beautiful place and you guys are retired you traveled hard for three days through this wilderness like you're scratched and bruised and and well actually it wasn't that hardcore but it was a tough run and you're looking forward to some rest and and some of you are going to go with him now he is going to he calls down these eagles and they land and they're huge giant golden eagles and he hops on he says are you sure And he's saying to, of course, the twins or whoever wanted to go. Anyone else want to go? Yeah, I'll go. As long as my twin does. I'm yeah. making more value out of the food that he offers. <laughs> yeah. They're, oh, they're good hosts. And they're giving you different stuff. They're giving you honeycombs that are like huge from giant honey. So each... I have no idea what that is. Oh, but when they bring it out on a tray, it, <laughs> it looks like this big hexagon grid, uh, perfect hexagons, each one a big capsule holding about a quarter liter of, of this golden nectar. And 
the 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 gorilla comes up and puts the tray down in front of you and he dips his pinky into one and cuts off the top part like the wax and yeah. he puts his finger in and he licks it and he's just like grins and <laughs> and bounds away and you're having a great time he's bringing out different stuff he seems to want to want to kind of please you guys and, and uh fruit and fish they're making me very happy <laughs> it brings you out different types of fish then like they have they have lake trout, they have uh, spring trout, they have uh, kokanee, and of course they have. Uh, oh, the gnome is sticking with samos. This is a sweet this is salmon. A... Oh, okay, Samos just kind of yeah, he ties in for a while. He's he's and so the twins jump on the other eagle, and grab on. And anyone else going? And they jump off and fly I'm off. Sticking with that I lovely buffet is can see happening right there. My choices are a free. Bunch of a bunch of free food or flying on the back of a bird. Hmm, what's high wrap? Nope. Yeah, it's gonna be a cold flight. It's <laughs> you, it's get cold and dark, and but it's gonna be a nice starry night. It's gonna be nice. And he flies off and takes you guys to this perch on the mountains. It's way up, and he has this sort of stone hedge sort of circle of stones, and he has them lined up and synchronized so that he can see certain constellations. If you stand in certain spots in this circle and you look in certain directions, you can see he. He knows what he's doing. He goes around and he points out some stuff and he proceeds to spend the next four or five hours doing this. He goes to different spots and stands and he he's, he has a parchment and scribe out. And if anybody wants to follow him and, and he'll, he just starts to ramble and, and he starts talking about constellations and he starts talking about uh, the myth behind it. And he gets into some stories, but he does, you do pick up some key information. Um, in fact, if you guys sit there and hang out with him and and be nice, I guess, and you guys have a snack, and later on he has food, and the eagles are off, and they'll come back, uh, you guys will gain a, a background in in stargazing. I have a in fact, I'll quiz him on the mathematical aspects and, you know, just to learn as much hey, as I can. He shows you about some mind-boggling stuff. Like stuff like that's actual physics, um, you know how how they use an arc minute. I don't know if you know cosmology or anything. Oh, yeah. uh, right. He he starts opening your he starts opening your guys's mind up to this world of mathematics and and thinking of things in scales you could never have imagined. Like time and distance becomes. I don't know if I'm feeding back or somebody else is. It, it's me, Darren. I'm having a hard time getting back to my. Hang, give me a second. Let me see if I can get around my cat to mute. Can you just mute then? Or I'll yeah, mute, I'm yeah. trying to get around my cat to get to where I can do it. Hang on a second. No problem. Okay. So anyway, you guys get stargazing plus you get some mathematics. Uh, or actually, let's call it cosmology because down the road this could come in handy. Um, now I'm wishing I went. <laughs> and but you guys do, yeah make a constitution checks you guys now actually elves can't get colds or get sick yeah and i oh, can but there's a lot of metal in these mountains up here now that's so, a question i have to ask you on that one if it's going to be a hostile environment mm -hmm. um do you have your uh your psionics handbook within reach? I do not. Uh, uh, I was. It's that. not hardcore, but you are in up here. There's a lot of iron ore. Because uh, yes, I've got a. I body appreciate control, you. which uh, yeah, which allows me to adapt my body to a hostile environment. Uh, can oh. be key to specific surroundings: water, acid, extreme heat, extreme cold, an elemental plane, etc. Right. Uh, so if you want to spend a few uh, points, you can calibrate your, your body and yeah. nullify me, uh, the effects of, of that. The Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, it cost me seven and it's five a turn. So every 10 minutes, I'll have to spend another five, which means I can keep it up for... Uh, well, what I'll do is I'll exp I'll expand that too because it's you're not in an intense hostile environment, so I'd I'd like triple the effects. Okay, um, so let me make my power score roll first of all. So uh, I, no, uh, 
Tylen, do you have or Tyren or Tanren? Ty, ten. Ten. <laughs> ten. Yeah, Brian's character. Um, <laughs> it's you have to make con check unless you have some way to balance yourself. Ooh, I did not make that because it's con minus four. Yeah, but you were uh, you said you just had that ability. Yeah, but I, I have to roll with second edition psionics. I have to make a successful power check to activate it. Oh, okay. Another round, of, you, you can attempt it the next round. In fact, okay. we can, can both converge and attempt to do it as well. Well, I made it the next round. Okay, so what's going to happen is you're going to expend those psionic points and you, you don't get them back. Yeah, until I rest. Yeah. Yeah, until you have a, a decent rest, an actual decent rest. And you, you're up all night with him reading the stars. So. Uh, after about five hours, good five hours, you guys have gotten this information and he, he, he whistles his speech and these eagles come down, pick you guys up. And again, a, a wild experience. You're flown back and these eagles gently deposit you back at the homestead and you can hear your companions. As far as I know, they were probably snoring at this point. I'm not sure if they were up. I had nothing but trail rations and I've had a miserable experience. Nope, this is like five, six hours later. Oh yeah, I'm passed out snoring. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, you guys are very comfortable. You, even Somos is 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 just starting to relax. And this food and the and the mead. You guys get a solid rest. You guys are fully recharged, except for the twins lost some side points. So, uh, so Darren, I'm pretty I'm sure Somos drinks right now. Okay, hold on. I got uh, two people talking. Uh, so uh, Tyrant's giving that gorilla a run for his money while he's sleeping. He is loud at this point. Oh, I see. He's engorged and loud. Uh, burping and farting and, and snoring. Yeah. He is, and he's not exactly uh, shy about any of it. And uh, the next morning, it's like 5.30 in the morning and dawn, and, and the you can hear the bees humming outside and, and birds chirping. And, uh, inside, I think the bee bees. would be like a lot <laughs> Now, the bees are sort of a constant. They come and go. Uh, they they pollinate the flowers, and they they have this. You noticed a huge. I don't know the biology behind it. I just have never seen anything like them before. Yeah, and don't like bees. Uh, don't, no, it's it's the fact that I just have never seen them before. I have no idea the connection between bees and honeymead. Honeymead was just this thing that I very much enjoyed. Now I'm seeing bees. Well, Sprite and told you. Yeah, I thought. Yeah, I tried to explain it to him. I got a three on my persuasion. Yeah, I wasn't listening. Um. Okay, well, there's only so much you can do then. Yeah, um, it's just like. I'm only, I'm only gonna try and do, I'm only gonna try to explain a concept to him at least once or twice before I give up. So in the next morning, the eagles up. come in, and mm -hmm. the twins and and Durwith are there, and you guys break your fast, and with another scrumptious meal and he's impressed and and he says so i tell you these dero they are close i've the stars have told me that in fact they've it is very close to their lair I, and he and he kind of he shows you on a rough map the valley and he says keep traveling north follow the river it will branch to the right follow the right branch and that will take you to the lair and i think you will see Something impressive. If I, I think they are very close to the impact point. Be careful, mm. though. They're very smart, very cunning. Mm. And I wish you luck. Thank you for the food. Oh, my hearty friend. It's been a while since we've had guests. I'm glad you enjoyed your stay, everybody. Mm -hmm. And he's, it's. You guys are almost regret leaving now. You're like, oh man, it'd be nice to hang out here for a week, uh, put on a few pounds, and <laughs> enjoy yourselves. But uh, lo and behold, you guys head out. You, you, you uh, follow the trail down the, the river, and for probably three days, you guys travel through his domain. Sort of his. He said, for three days, I have sort of uh, eyes and ears out there and i know that i've they have not seen daryl for a long time 
and in particularly in the last few days. So I think you'll be clear, at least until you get to their territory, which is after three days, be on your guard. Mm. And you guys head out. And he gives you guys rations uh, for five days, rations. Oh, and they're like sweet. smoked salmon and uh, oh, yeah. jerky. And he gives you some of these honeycombs that uh, Somos fallen in love with and Tyrath. <laughs> That's like Winnie the Pooh time. Oh, bother. And you guys head for three days. You head through these. And the forest now doesn't seem so imposing, actually. You guys have really enjoyed yourself. It's been a great experience. Um, but lo and behold, the river does sort to of get smaller. It's almost down to creek and the, the valley narrows at the Northwest and you enter, uh, what supposedly is the territory of this Darrow and things are quiet, but you still hear the odd creature and animal. Um, it's not like a wasteland and let me have a quick look. Now I'm going to take a short bio, everybody. Uh, Darren. Yes, sir. It's 20 minutes to nine. And it sounds like we're about to get into the thick of things. Oh, right. And you got to go in a while. Problem here. Well, normally I, I, when people miss sessions, I, I play them as NPCs, but then that's, that's risky too, right? And very risky, especially after uh, seeing some things in Ian's campaign. Um, True. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I don't know what you want to do. I don't, don't really want Somos to be, a, an NPC. Well, I, I the choice would, you could just stay back with Durwith and you wouldn't get any experience points though. Cause you're not doing anything. You're back there. I mean, um, I might give you something, a proficiency or something for hanging around with him and, uh, for, for, for a day or so. I'm comfortable with an early night tonight, though. I well, our, 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 yeah, it's early night. We just, it's only been an hour, but um, I, I'm set up I for the. Help. Yeah. Let's get up at four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. You know, early night, um, if I have to stay back at the commune with that guy, then so be it. But well, uh, no, you'd be safe. I don't, and... I, I don't want to be. I don't want to go on for another twenty minutes and get into the thick of things and be like, "Well, shit." Yeah. You know, that well, point, it's too late. Did anyone else plan on playing for a couple, three hours yet? To the end, I'm free. Well, well, hey, say... You guys think, can go ahead and play. I don't mind. Yeah, and, and Eric, I, I, yeah, I get it. And at this time, you can actually physically go back and stay with Darewith. Um, yeah. It's not like you're, like you said, in the fray. Uh, well, you could have come buddies with the gorilla and <laughs> wrestle. <laughs> I was going to say, I can't do three hours. I can do about another hour and 20 minutes. That, that's about as long as I can do because I've got to get up. Well, I don't want to stop you guys from playing. You know, if you guys want to keep playing, then so be it. Keep going. Yeah. Well, no, it sounds like other people might not be okay with. Well, I'm okay with going. I'm like Jeff. I have to get hit the rack at some point because I've got things to do in the morning, and I've got a super important meeting in the afternoon tomorrow. So yeah, I hit the rack. I have to... point, it'll be midnight here, an hour and twenty minutes. So I can go for about another hour and a half, but that's going to be about the extent I can go. Well, it sounds like it might be an idea to uh, postpone until we can get together for a three-hour yeah, I, I, slot, I, I, I four-hour slot. I didn't realize what time it was, to be frank, until somebody just mentioned it. Yeah, and but the thing is, we have to start at 6, 6.30. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Well, um, normally, normally, you know I can go till like 1, 2 in the morning my time. It's just I've got stuff that I've got to take care of tomorrow. i got to type a paper in the morning.